What's up, pickle peeps? Uh, question of the day. Have you ever wanted to add an e a timer into your emails, but either didn't know how or were super frustrated by the tech of doing it? No worries. I got you covered. Today, we are going to my favorite timer resource that I use in all of my emails. I'll also be showing you how to add it in to your email platform. I use MailChimp, but this should work in just about all of them, whether you use MailChimp or Klaviyo, uh, Mailgun, MailerLite, <laughs> Flowdesk. Uh, there's a gazillion more that's not coming up in my brain right now, but I'll give you the key things to look forward to doing it. So that said, let's get started to the computer. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, let's get to it. So first off, why might you want to use an email or a timer in your emails? First off, definitely sales and promotions, uh, launches, anything that is an event that's happening that has a start or an end date, you can put a timer in. And timers are especially attention grabbing. So someone, if you get them to open your email, like fantastic, they're probably going to scroll through, maybe looking at headlines, bolded pieces, italics in my mind kind of disappear in the view, but the bold stands out. They might look at bullet points and they're definitely going to see a countdown timer and just straight up intrinsically, we are human. We know the clock is ticking. Uh, countdown timers create instant access FOMO. So great things there. Um, I encourage you anytime you can use a countdown timer, do it, do it, do it, do it. So let's go. Let me show you first off my favorite tool for countdown timers, which is centric. Now there's two that I've used. I've used mostly centric and motion mail. They both have free options. Um, what I love about Centric is that it does not have any of their branding on it. So versus um, Motion Mail does, but you can go out a lot further in the future with Motion Mail. So like there's pros and cons to each. I happen to like Centric. If you're not, pl if you're planning your emails for a year in one time, you probably want to go with Motion Mail. If you're doing them like just, I'll usually try to batch my emails for the month, um, then I'm going with Centric. So Let's go over here and this will be linked in the um, description below. You'll have the link for Centric. So here we go. This is what it looks like. Now, this is one of those great free ones that I haven't even created an account in. It's not like if you get a free um, Bitly account, you totally want to create an account so you can customize your backends and you can see the stats and all of that. Um, <laughs> I have found that if I log in on Centric, it just gives me too many options, messes things up. I get confused. I like to keep it nice and simple. So to do it, you're going to put your email address in here. Um, then you're going to put in your time zone. Now this is already set for me. I'm in New York time zone. And then you're going to give your timer. So let's create a timer here. So it's got your calendar. You can type in stuff. You don't have to click the buttons. I happen to like clicking the buttons. So let's say we're doing one for Saturday and I'm going to do it for 8.30 at night. That's usually when my trunk shows are, but there's not one this weekend, but whatever. So we have that going on. Next thing, you can choose your language, English. And then um, part that I like with the customizing here is the colors. So your background, your labels, and your digits is what you can cover. So your background. Now, I really do all of my backgrounds as white on here. I kind of want that part to blend in. Otherwise, to me, they look very amateur, but that could just be me. If you have a color theme or a color block going on on your email, you might want to put it to match that background color. I tend to go with just straight white. So 6F, so that puts in white for the hex codes. The labels, that's going to be like it'll have on here. You can see it. So I hear that blue would be the background. The labels are this part, the hours, the minutes, the seconds, and then the digits are the big numbers. So I tend to do my labels in black. So six, six zeros for black. There's only like three hex codes that I've memorized, white, black, and my blue, <laughs> which is strangely similar to their blue, which is just kind of weird. So now I'm going to put my numbers in my brand color. And this is just how I do it. You don't have to do it this way. I mean, definitely don't put in my brand color for yours unless it's, you know, we share a brand color, unless we're, we're, we're brand color sisters here. Um, and then you're going to check the button to I agree, and you have to put in your email address and generate. And it's going to show you 
It's going to give you the preview of the timer. You can see that right here. Okay, I can't highlight it. And then it's going to give you this piece of HTML code. Now, the HTML code is what we're going to put anywhere we want to have our countdown timer. Now, these are really, I haven't tried using them on websites or any of that stuff because most builders have a countdown timer intrinsic to it. Why would I go grab one from somewhere else? Um, but I do put these in all of my emails. So I'm going to head on over to MailChimp. Okay, so here we are in MailChimp. This is just a sample email that I pulled up for my save templates. And you can see in here, I actually have a um, countdown timer already in there. And this is a previous timer that disappeared a long time ago. So I'm going to straight up delete that. I'm going to show you guys from scratch how to pull in a timer. So what you're going to look for, and this is whether it's MailChimp right here or any other platform that you use, there should be an option somewhere to have code. And if there's not an option for code, usually there's some option for source code. And it usually looks like the two brackets like that, like, like this right here shown on the code one. So I'm going to grab that and pull it over. And this is specifically for putting in HTML, CSS, that stuff. All right. So you can see in here is saying use your own HTML code. That is what's actually in the text right over here on the code. Now, you do not need to learn HTML to do this. I promise. It's only we're only going to do two things and you'll be done. This is a beautiful. This whole thing is a three step process. Make the code, insert the code, center the code. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. So we made our code over in Centric, and now we're going to put it in here. Now, yours may or may not have like this section right here, the div class, all that stuff. If it does, just leave their regular content in there. I know MailChimp has a lot of their own coding in. But where it has your own thing, like it says here, use your own custom HTML, that's where we're going to put our centric HTML. So let me go back over here. I'm going to copy this. So I just triple clicked control C to copy or right click copy either one. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to hit control V to paste or you can do right click. V, Command V, any of those. All right, and we have, you can see, this is our same timer that we had over in Centric. Now, what I don't like about this timer is it's all the way to the left. Yeah, left. <laughs> I like my timers to be centered on the screen, unless all of my text, if I'm doing, if I'm sending a coaching email and I'm doing on that stuff and I'm working on those, those things more so I tend to keep to the left, but really usually I like all of my timers to be like boom, center, front and center on my emails. Now, I don't always put a timer at the top like is going on in this one. Uh, this specific email is designed from a giveaway saying like, we're almost over. Like I want that timer front and center for that. But for most things that I do, the timer goes usually um, either below my image, um, above or below my call to action. Usually I do like image, timer, call to action is how I set up my emails. Um, we are running an email test. I don't know if anyone else sets up their emails like that. It's one of the things I may or may not look at. We'll see. Let me know how you like to set yours up. But let's go ahead and let's get this centered because you'll notice it's not like I can just hit text alignment center on here. It doesn't work that way. But what we can do is put in this teensy tiny bit of code. And I'll have this down below for you as well. So with HTML, everything is in these brackets. You can see um, they look just like these right here. So you have open and closing brackets. So we're going to open bracket and you can see everything um, next to it turned red, which means that the coding is broken. It doesn't work. We want our stuff to be green. So open bracket, I'm going to type in center and then we close bracket. Boom. That did it. But now we can see over here, the um, slash div is red. And that means that we're missing something technically on the code. Can it work like this? I think so, but I like to have it correct anyway. Please mind, I learned this style coding in middle school, so it's probably a lot updated. It's the only thing I know how to do in coding. So we did that before, directly before our, um, our HTML that we got from Centric. We're going to put that center. Now, directly after our HTML, everything um, in HTML opens and closes. You have to give it a start and an end point. So we're going to do, and it's usually the reverse. So on this one, we're going to open bracket and now we're going to hit, um, what is that? Forward slash backslash. I never remember. And we're going to do our same thing. Center. And we're going to close bracket. And now 
everything is green. So when you open, it's just the straight word center. And when you're closing it off, it's the slash center. You see it right on here. I'll have these linked down. I'll have these um, pieces in the description below so you can straight copy paste. <laughs> All right. And now you can see we are centered here. Everything on this side is green. Now, whatever provider you're using may or may not um, give you the red and green. It might not let you know if something works or is broken, but just as long as you know, opening brackets, closing brackets, you should be all good. All right, I'm going to hit save and close and boom, there is our countdown. And there we go. Super simple, right? One, step one, go to centric, make a timer. Step two, um, add an HTML element <laughs> into your email. And step three, insert your, um, your code and center it. Boom, done. Same thing if you wanted it to be like, they usually default to left center, but if you wanted it to, or left line, if you wanted it to be right aligned, you could probably, I've never tried that because I've never done one like that. That just looks weird in my head, but you probably could do it. <laughs> I just always do center. And I know it's always been a pain about people going in there and be like, I don't know how to get it to center. Go into the source code. So you either have a code option like this or if it's not like this, um, let me show you another way that it sometimes looks. Uh, so if you have more of a WYSIWYG editor, like a what you see is what you get kind of editor, you'll often see these two brackets right here. And now you know that those mean HTML, right? Because we did that today. So if I looked at this right here and I hit on the source, it's going to show you. So our text is centered in here. Um, we have our font size. This is, there's some coding in there from um, MailChimp, bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. and it's going to show your line breaks. This is how you read on that side. I hate reading on that side. But if you needed to enter into source code, at least now you see where it goes. And so just make sure to have an open and a close point. Otherwise, your center might mess up everything else on your page if you don't close it off. So there you go. I'm going to hit this again. And it's going to go back to the regular view editor. And that's it. We're all set. <laughs> so, uh, Pickle Peep, let me know if this helped you out. If you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you want more tech tutorials, uh, more, like, let me know what are the tips, what are the questions you have, what are the things you're like, oh, I do this tech thing, and I feel like I'm doing it the hard way. Maybe there's an easier way. Maybe Melissa knows an alternate way to do it. Like, drop those below. I love uh, seeing and making what you guys want to learn about what's going to help you. So for that, um, if this tutorial helped you out, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We are on a 90 day sprint right now and we are going, um, today is day 15. No, today is day 16 of our 90 day sprint. And we'll ha be having videos every day, how to's and on the business journey, plus the fun experiments that we do. And that's that. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then.